Ah, okay. Seems to be okay. So it's, as I said, it's less about me telling you something, but it's more about your um, figures telling you things and tell you, telling you things maybe you don't even know yet. My name is Lionel Portman. I'm accounting business analyst at Odoo. And uh, this is my last talk for uh, this year of Odoo experience, so I'm really glad to be here with you. And maybe just let me show you the pad here so you can just scan the QR code and ask all your questions. You have the URL as well if you want. Don't hesitate and I will answer to them at the end of the, the talk. Uh, I will put again the QR code at the end so no worries if you don't have time to uh, scan it. So maybe to start, what is the analytic accounting and why using it? So basically, the analytic accounting is an additional layer to your general accounting where you are going to create categories, if I can say it like that, to properly and in detail allocate all your cost and revenue. And why is it interesting? Because then, obviously, you will be able to much better monitor the performance of your company because you will have a full overview on how you spend your money and how you gain, you have your revenue. But it will also definitely help you with your budget process because it might definitely facilitate your budget uh, process. So let's maybe do a small recap of the evolution of Odoo's analytic accounting from the last version. So on Odoo 15, for those who know, we were working with analytic tags. Then on Odoo 16, we completely revamped the analytic accounting of Odoo and we introduced the analytic plans and the analytic distribution. But so, and maybe you heard already about it today, but what did we add on Odoo 17? We added now the possibility to cross every plan to do analysis. And on top of that, we also introduce an analytic distribution by amount. But we also added a new analytic report because the purpose, of course, of the analytic accounting is to do analysis. And we added a new grid view where you will be able to see a breakdown by analytic dimension, a monthly breakdown. So. In order to show you this, maybe let's first start with a use case. So basically, I was contacted by Rose, who is the finance director at Events Building. And Events Building is a company who is organizing um, events and mainly also organizing and managing the bar at those events. And Rose is looking for a software to be able to track the cost and the revenue, but also for every event that they are doing, she would like to monitor the budget of those, e uh, those events and to see the profitability. So for today, you are going to be my rose. And hopefully, I will make you bloom with all the features I'm going to show you. So let's jump into the database. And so I will have a meeting now with you, uh, with Rose. We implemented the analytic accounting, and I will explain her how does it work and how, obviously, she can do her analysis, because that's the purpose, as I said, uh, of what we are doing with analytic accounting. So let's see first how to configure it. So you can just go on the accounting app, and it will work with analytic plan and analytic accounts. So you told me uh, that uh, some of your analytic plans, so analytic plan, basically, it's your analytic dimension you are not going to record anything on it. It's just that you can create your category, as, we, as I just said before. And you told me also that for some analytic plan, you don't have to always book something on it to distribute an amount on it. That's why you have the applicability. You can put it as optional, as mandatory, or even as unavailable if, for instance, for a category, you don't want to see it on your expense, but you only want to see it on your revenue on your sales. But we can go further than that, because maybe for some plan, you want to have, as I said, to see it on your invoices, customer invoice, but not on your vendor bill. That's why you can add here what we call domain, and you can put a specific applicability by those different domains. 
if you put it as optional, you need to know also that it means you can allocate more or less than 100% of the cost to this analytical plan. But we will see that directly. And then to those analytic plan, uh, which is your category, you are going to link your analytic accounts. And this is on the anal analytic account that you are going to record directly your, to distribute your amount, to record your entry. So now let's illustrate that and do an invoice. So I'll create a customer invoice in this case because you told me that so you are selling an uh, entrance package uh, to your event. So here, let me just create your invoice for the Sunshine customer. And I will here select the product. Whoops. Let me just select the product. So these are going to be your drinks package. It's a flat fee that you make per person. And here we are going to put it for 400 person. When you click here, when I click on the analytic distribution, you see that we changed also the widget. It's not by line anymore now. It's going to be by column and by line. And here we can find the analytical plans. It's important to see that here we have four different plans. So now you can just start your analytic distribution. So here it's going to be for a specific event. So let's put my event. Then the event type. Here I'm going to put here at the after work. And what I want to do here is to break down those revenues by type of drink, because this is what I want to, analysis, to analyze also. So here I will put the beers to start, and it's going to take place in uh, Walloon Brabant. So I will just put 25% here, and I will do my next line. So you see now I can see the allocation by plan, and I also have it at the end of the line. So let's keep going. So I will just do the same, so like this. Uh, sorry, it's not for beer, it's going to be here for cocktails. And the province remain the same. And so I can keep 25%. I will just put here again my event. And I just need to do my allocation, you see, like this. And I will put, all right, the remaining 25%. And we do the last one. So for the event, after work, wine and champagne. And so. Now, you see, I made the distribution. I can see here that I'm 100% allocated on all my plans. And I'm also here, I have the breakdown by line. So let's just confirm this invoice. Actually, sorry, before confirming it, you see, I just took a little bit of time to distribute it. And obviously, I don't want to do it every time again. Or also, you know, sometimes maybe the people who are going to create the entry they don't know about the analytic distribution. That's why you will be able to save as a model your analytic distribution. And you see here the floppy disk. You can just here click on it, and you will be able to decide on which criteria you want this analytic uh, distribution to be applied. So here, let's say I want every time that my customer is sunshine and that my product is going to be so my flat fee, my drink package, I want this analytic distribution to be applied. And I can just save. Now let's confirm this invoice. And I will show you now how you can use these templates with a vendor bill. So here I have vendor bills to validate. And let's go to the first one. So here I have my vendor bill. And you see, I just need to add line, add my product, which is going to be here for a beer pump. And automatically, my analytic distribution is done. So I don't need to do it manually again, so I can definitely save a lot of time. And I just need to confirm my invoice. So now, let's go to the other vendor bill here that I have to do. Here, this vendor bill is for like a generic cost for my electricity. Actually, I don't need, and maybe the first thing you can notice here is that we don't have four plans anymore, we have five. This is thanks to the applicability that we have seen. Uh, the, the last uh, plan for the department was not applied on the sales, but only on the expenses on the vendor bill. So here, you don't have to fill in all the plans, because we put them as optional. 
So we can just put here and break down by department the cost of those electri this electricity. So let's just start with here the finance, and I will add already my second department, and you see that I can go over 100%. Here I'm already at 200%, I could keep going, so uh, as I said, you can go over or you can go below 100% if needed. So now let's do my here uh, distribution. I will put 25% on finance, and then for HR, actually, it's going to be, I want it by amount, so it's going to be 35 euro. And you see Odoo calculates automatically the percentage for me, so I can do both. So then let's keep doing it. So here I will put 20%, and then I will finish with the sales, which takes the remaining distribution. So you see you have the full flexibility to distribute the way you want. So now that I confirmed, that was for the recording part, if I can say it like that. Now, obviously, what is important, and you told me about that, you want to be able to analyze your figures now. So now, let's start with the profit and loss. So on the profit and loss, you have a first possibility, is that you will be able to add any analytic dimension on your report. So it's here, I can, for instance, add my event sunshine, and you see it adds a column, but I can go further, and I can add also the uh, second event, for instance. And so I can see my PNL by analytic plan, uh, analytic account here, sorry. But this is really nice, but you told me you wanted flexibility. So obviously, then what you can do is to go to the analytic items. So basically, when we recorded the invoices, behind the scene, it generated analytic items. And you can see here, what is interesting to see is that every analytic plan creates a separate columns here. So this is, you will see, really interesting for what we want to do in a few minutes. But also from this view, we improved a lot on Odoo 17, the search possibilities. So I will have to be able to search now on every analytic plan, but I can also search on financial accounts. So if I want to search for every event which have the word Oreca, I can just now go and look at those events, and you see I find out all those events. But this is for your analytic items. Regarding the analysis and the flexibility you told me, Rose, you will definitely use here the pivot view. Because from Odoo 17 now, you will be able to cross every analytic plan the way you want. So for instance, here, I would like to see by type of drink, you told me you would like to see it by province and by type of event. And you see, I can just expand everything at once, and now you can cross the information to make your analysis. This is a great new feature from Odoo 17 because you can let your figures talk. And for instance here, directly, what can we see? We can see that for the weddings, for instance, I have here weddings in my province, Walloon Brabant, and in Brussels, I can see that on the wine and champagne, we are not doing well. That's the first uh, things that I can notice, but then we, is it because I didn't allocate my sales properly? Maybe, uh, you know, on weddings you drink a lot of champagne, maybe I should allocate my sales on a different way for the weddings? Or is it really that I have a profitability issue? And we will need to go further on that. We can also see directly that the after work is doing really well. We are performing well there, but not in uh, Brussels. We see that in Brussels the after work is not really, maybe we need to increase our footprint because we can see that there is something here, the figures are quite low. So this is, you see, from one report, all the things we can already uh, see. Now, that's already good, but maybe let's see if there is any error, because I would like to detect also maybe if I made some mistakes. So to do that, I can also use my favorite filters to change here the way I want, I see my figures, and here, for instance, what can I see directly? I have my events by province, and I see that for my event in Namur, I have some cost in Brussels. That doesn't make sense. I don't want to go back to all my invoice, related invoice, and to change that, reset to draft, and change that. I can just 
click here on the wrong amount, if I can say it like that, I see the distribution of my analytic items, and I will be able to mass edit on them. So I can just select them all, go on the plan which is wrongly filled in, which is not correct, and I will be able to change it. And you see, Odoo asked me, is it correct I want to change it on everything? And now it is updated directly for everything. If I come back on my report, you can see that I have no more cost on Namur, uh, on Brussels, sorry, so it was corrected. So, this is nice, but again, you told me also that you would like to add some comments to do some formulas, maybe, so you would like some more flexibility as well. So, for that, I will also use my favorite filter, and we will look here maybe at your financial accounts by type of event. It's good that we have in, the, in this uh, in this way, but we can also insert it in an Odoo spreadsheet. And this Odoo spreadsheet is a spreadsheet, so you will be able to add whatever you want. So here I would like to add a gross margin calculation. And so I can just do formula. So it equals my sales minus the cost of goods sold, if I can say it like that, like that, divided by my sales. I just calculate it, and I will just copy and paste it on all the other columns. I will transform that into a percentage here, and let me highlight it with some color so we can see it better. So here, what can we see? We can directly see that, indeed, what we already saw at the beginning with the champagne on the wedding, but it's not only about allocating properly our revenue. We have a margin issue on our wedding. So definitely here we should increase our price because the margin compared to the average of the other events is lower. So that's something we can uh, analyze from that. But we want maybe to go even further. And you will be able to use what we call the global filters on Odoo. And here, you would like to filter by events, to just see the figures by events. So you can just go and look for the model. Here, this is my analytic account. It's by default on the event, and now I can save it and select my event. So for instance, I want to see my figures only for the Sunshine event, and I can see everything for my Sunshine event. And this report remains connected to the analytic accounting and to the accounting. That means that every time you are going to connect to this report, you will have the up-to-date figures. All right, that was for the analysis part. You also told me that you would like to have direct monthly breakdown. So to do that, you can go on your new analytic reporting. And here, you have a new grid view. And you see on this grid view, you have directly a monthly breakdown, and you will be able to decide how you want to group by. So here, for instance, I want to see my figures by event, and then by type of drink, but I also want to add the financial account. And you see now I can see all this in this grid view with the monthly breakdown and do my analysis. You have completely the hand on that, and you decide how you want to do it. So, as you are organizing event as well, Rose, obviously you told me about having budget for all your events and to be able also to track the profitability. So let's now go to maybe the budget to see that you can create budget by event. You see here, because on the budget feature of Odoo, you can add an analytic account. That means that Odoo will only look at all the entries booked on this analytic account, and so now you are able to do a budget by event. But we can go further than that. You can also manage your, your event, your project, and see the profitability directly from the project. So let's go out here and let's move to the project app. And here you see, if I go on my project, I can just look at the project updates and here I can see that I have a profitability of my project, and I also find the link with my budget. So from the project management, I can always have 
the financial figures here and tracked everything from my project directly. So you see here, what we have seen with the analytic accounting is that we let the figures speak and talk. So that was here the purpose, as I told you, of this analytic accounting. And thanks to this cross-buy, you can definitely do whatever you want. Now, maybe one last thing. I just show you the analytic distribution on the invoices, but know that we can do analytic distribution on a lot of different things. You can do it on the purchase order, sales order. You see also manufacturing orders. But we can also do it on your bank entries. You can do it on your assets, depreciation, on every miscellaneous operation, and on your expense notes as well. So that was it for this presentation. You have the pad. Don't hesitate to ask me any question. And thank you for your attention. You know, uh, we already have a, a, a number of questions. OK, cool. Uh, first question, how would you set analytical accounts for sub companies, mainly for reporting? Uh, or um, analytical accounts is not a good tool for consol um, consolidation reports? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, so you mean, like, uh, maybe as we have seen, so for the branches, um, so. I don't know if it's, uh, otherwise the person can come to our booth huh, for sure, then we can see this question in details. But so, yeah, I would say here, if it's regarding a branch, um, as we said, the branch, I mean, not in this hall, but as maybe you heard today, a branch is sharing the same chart of account, the same, because it's one legal entity, I would definitely use an analytic accounting to be able maybe to do some specific reports, even though, with the new feature of the branch, you can now do specific reports by branch as well. So uh, I would say depending on the use case. But I invite the person to meet me at the booth maybe to discuss about this question. Great. Uh, another question. Um, why would I want to go over 100% while allocating? Ah, it's, it's a good question. Actually, I have not really an answer to that. But just I think it's interesting to know that we give this opportunity. We let this opportunity. So if for any business that you have, it might be interesting to have it, then know that you are not blocked. Uh, you know, on o at Odoo, we don't like to block, so that's why you have the possibility. If you don't want it, just put your analytic plan on mandatory, and then you cannot go over 100%. You have to mention 100% to allocate 100% to it. OK. Um, another question. Is there any improvement to budget uh, in order to put a limit to purchases when the analytical account budget is near the limit? Uh, I would say here maybe, so we, it's maybe more a budget uh, question. So I would say no, indeed, for the moment it's not the case. I cannot tell you if it's uh, something we are working on and so on. So again, I would invite the person to go to the booth maybe to uh, request for more information. Uh, but this is also maybe linked more to budget, so yeah. Good. Um, he, another um, viewer asks, can you make a plan mandatory based on the values of another plan? Uh, uh, that's a good question. I don't see the use case, but actually, so it's not like this in standard, uh, actually. Uh, so you can just say, uh, I showed it, huh? so you have like by, I would say, prefix of account, you have by type of document, if I can say, so vendor bill, customer invoices. But so what you said, uh, for the moment, it's not uh, like possible. Um, standard, I'm saying yeah. it's standard. Okay. And then uh, a question, do you have any examples of analytical accounting in construction businesses? Oh, I think I would say to answer this question, uh, this is definitely something we can discuss at the at the booth. This is really specific, so the person who asked this question, uh, I'm not an expert on the construction sector, but I would be more than happy to discuss about it, and we can definitely see what suits the best to to this person. Okay, I think uh, those are all the questions, and our time's up. Ah, all right, thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Thank you.